over 150,000 Turks opposing us. 25,000 men, pending. Nothing went according to plan. By midday, the place was a fiery inferno. We were so close, enemy shells splintered the decks. It was my first time under fire. I've got to admit, I was afraid. The men were trapped by constant fire. The wounded, they do, they just kept on coming. The air was electric. The 25 April is a film that tells the story of ordinary individuals put into an extraordinary circumstance, uh, a World War I campaign, who managed to overcome the horror of the situation and hold on to their humanity. The original idea was to make a film about Gallipoli. We decided that he wanted to do something unusual and he said how would I feel about working with him on an animated documentary and that was really what it interested me. If it had just been an ordinary documentary, a, a, a traditional documentary, I wouldn't have been interested. But the idea of taking the story and having the opportunity to bring the people who were at Gallipoli back to life through animation was just really, really, really exciting as a storyteller. So there was a year of research before we really started to animate anything. Um, and that involved reading hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of diaries. I knew from the get-go that I wanted to choose a number of individuals who could tell their own story. I didn't want to impose the story on it. I wanted it to, to be the actual reflections of people who were there. So we read diaries, we read letters, we read memoirs. And we were looking for certain things. We were looking for um, individuals who could articulate more than just the facts. I mean, one of the things we had with a lot of the diaries, the classic sort of Kiwi diaries, and it was like, it's hot, you know, and, and you know, Joe died. And, and they didn't say a great deal about what they were actually experiencing. And so I was looking for individuals who, not, who didn't just talk about what was happening, but talked about how they felt about what was happening and how that was impacting them as individuals. We were looking for individuals that sort of were present for sort of important moments in the in the campaign. You know, I needed some of my characters to be there right at the beginning. I needed somebody to be there at the end. Um, there's there's a famous battle that the New Zealanders were involved in, which they call the Daisy Patch. That was a really important battle early on in the uh, conflict that a lot of New Zealanders. Uh, were at and they spoke about it a lot in their diaries so I wanted to make sure at least one of my characters was there. The sinking of the battleship the Triumph was an important moment. When that happened there was a palpable sense of fear really amongst the the chaps on the on the cliffs because the battleships had been supporting them. So I wanted to make sure that that was in the film so I needed one of my characters to talk about it in his diary. There's also a, um, there was an armistice declared where uh, both the Turks and the Allies were allowed to bury their dead, so they stopped the conflict for a day. And the, the, this is one of an opportunity for the two sides to meet each other. And the, the Turkish soldiers and the, and the Kiwi soldiers would come face to face and share a cigarette while they were collecting their dead and it was a, a lot of them talked about that in their diaries as being sort of a pivotal moment where they realized that these people on the other side of the hill were actually just young men as well. We were really careful to only use the words of the individuals. We didn't want to put words into anybody's mouths. I didn't want to put somebody somewhere where they weren't. So uh, I needed to find individuals who could articulate the things that I knew were important about the story and that was a big challenge. As I say it was a year's research. I think we were really lucky because we were using mainly diaries and letters. We were in the moment and in the ordinary and in the, the everyday experience of Gallipoli with these young men and we could bring them back to life in that moment because it's animation. I mean often in, in uh, war films you're actually hearing old men talk about something that happened a long time ago and you're hearing those uh, stories through the, the sort of filter of time. 
Because these diaries were written on the day, it gave it a, an immediacy and also it set it in the place of the ordinary soldier. We intentionally didn't want the famous soldiers to tell the story. I, I looked for soldiers who were, and a nurse, who were ordinary individuals dealing with a terribly extraordinary moment in history and, um, and, and explaining what it meant to them because I think that'll connect with ordinary New Zealanders today and because that was one of the things that really struck me reading the diaries is how it didn't feel a hundred years old. They, they felt like young people that you could talk to today. Their frustrations, their anger, their fears, they were all I think completely understandable and, and could have been young people writing now. We want the audience to go on a journey with these young men. Animation gives me the opportunity to put my audience inside the heads of these guys at certain points in the film. And so the experience that they have as an audience should be as close to the experience as the soldiers had as possible. So the sounds, the smells, the flies, they should all be as real as possible. The producer had seen a, doc a quite a well-known documentary uh, to cinephiles called Waltz with Bashir, which is an animated documentary about the, the Lebanon War. It's an Israeli film. And he was very, very moved by that film and felt that we could explore doing something similar with the Gallipoli story. And I'd also seen Waltz with Bashir and agreed. When we first got together with the animators to talk about how we wanted the film to look, the brief from me was that I wanted it to feel animated. I didn't want us to use animation to try to be real. Why do that? We're animated. Let's embrace the notion that we're animated. So the brief to the wonderful animators at Flux Animation in Auckland was that we wanted the film, I wanted to see the brush strokes. I wanted, it, I wanted to embrace the fact that they were drawn, these characters were drawn, and I wanted it, so I wanted it to have a graphic novel feel. One of the things that the film tries to do is look, is look at what Gallipoli meant to New Zealand at the time and then afterward. People are looking for a connection to the past. New Zealand's a young country. Its sense of self is actually still evolving in lots of ways and I think that sense of self is tied to recent history, to World War I, to World War II. Gallipoli was the beginning of New Zealanders looking to themselves and knowing that they needed to count on each other rather than counting on Britain, who they felt had let them down. It was really interesting reading the diaries, really interesting, because it did come through in the diaries that there was a palpable shift amongst a lot of these young men, whereby they went off to war absolutely believing in king and country, believing in empire, and a lot of them came back having shifted on how they felt about that. They felt a much closer allegiance and, or alliance, if you like, to the Australians and what they experienced together at um, Gallipoli. There is a, a, a journey that a lot of these individuals went through that is the beginning of a sense of New Zealand as a country separate from Mother Britain, if you like. Um, and a couple of the characters in the film articulate it really specifically. And People sort of say, oh no, we're, that's revisionist, we're making that up. Well, I read a lot of diaries and it did, it was something that came through. I think Anzac Day is, is, is a moment to acknowledge our history, acknowledge those who've made sacrifices, acknowledge what's come before, and maybe think about what it did mean at the time and what it means now. I mean, I don't want my film to be some sort of glorification of war. I'm not interested in glorifying Gallipoli. It wasn't glorious. It was a terrible, terrible cock-up from day one to the very, you know, the only thing that went well was, was the retreat. So, it, you know, I don't want to glorify it. I'm extraordinarily proud of the film. I think, uh, I think that the work that the animators at Flux did, it, every frame is a piece of art and you, it, it's special. It, give, it, it, it embraces this story and, and at the same time as acknowledging the horror, it somehow finds beauty in it. And there's so many beautiful moments that the animators have managed to achieve in the context of, of a terrible, terrible event. The responses, the emotional connection that people made with the individuals in the film is what I'm proudest of.
25 April is being released uh, in the main centres around New Zealand on the 28th of April. There's special screenings across the country on the 25th, so on Anzac Day there are special screenings in Auckland, Wellington, Dunedin and Christchurch. Um, but the general release is actually the following weekend on the 28th at cinemas in the main centres.